Hey everyone, we are back again with chapter 8. So go ahead and get your interactive notebook and your um, book and let's chug along. Alright, go ahead and label your interactive notebook uh, simplifying equations, update your table of contents, and we are not doing anything crazy new in this chapter, but we are going to put a lot of it together and make it more difficult. So, kind of normal, make it a little bit harder as it goes on, but let's start with just a basic uh, simplifying example. Remember, simplify doesn't mean we have an answer. We're not going to find what y is here. We're just going to simplify. So a lot of you like to do this before. We used either different colors or different shapes. I'm going to circle my like terms and remember that you need to circle the sign that goes in the front. It owns the sign in the front. So right here, I just have a 5y. Well, if nothing is in the front, it is implied oops, that it is a positive or a plus. So you can add that if you want to. Um, I'm going to box my constants. There's no variable that goes with it. So I'm going to put these two together, and a positive 5 and a negative 6 gives me a negative 1y plus a positive 2 and a positive 14 gives me 16. And I can't do anything else with my two constants. and They're not able to be joined. They're two different terms, and they're separated. Terms are separated by a plus or a minus sign. So we have two terms here. Um, but what I can do to simplify is just to make this a negative y plus 16. Okay, you don't really have to have the 1. Okay, remember this? Well, let's go ahead and start um, putting this together to actually solve for our variable. Remember, if we're talking about an equation, an equation has what kind of a sign can you imagine? Yeah, an equal sign. Okay, now this one doesn't technically have an equal sign. This is more simplified. It's equal to the previous thing here. So let's copy down our next example. This time we're going to solve. So we want to combine our like terms first. Um, you wouldn't have to, but because I still have some like terms, uh, we need to simplify this thing up a little bit. Okay, but remember, you always have this invisible line down your equal sign, and I can only do things to one side or the other. So I can't really put all of my things together in the way that I might want to originally. So let's see, our terms, I guess. I'm going to have my positive 8x. I also have a negative 4x I can put together. Um, and I have this positive 6, and I have this negative 86 and those can be combined but they're on opposite sides of the equal sign so I can't put them together I can only group the like terms that are on the same side okay so um, we're going to make this be a negative 4 take oh I'm sorry I guess an 8 minus 4 right or um, positive 8 minus 4x is going to give me 4x and I'm just going to leave my plus 6 and set it equal still to what's on the other side. I'm just going to do this one step here. Now this looks really familiar, and we know that we're solving for our x. Um, so I'm going to box it, and what's happening to the x right now? There's two things happening. It's being added to and multiplied. And remember, we're doing the opposite. We have to undo the order of operations. So we need to back up and say I have to... Not multiply first, I'm going to, correct, I'm going to add first. This is what's happening, and in order to undo that, I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So this leaves me with 4x on this side. This cancels the whole intention of us picking negative 6 just so that we can get rid of that on that side. Remember, imagine, I think it was Adam standing up there with his hands out on either end and he was holding things. We've got to do the same to both sides. And if we want to eliminate something entirely, we want to get rid of it on one side. Use this power that we have to add the same amount or subtract the same amount to turn that into zero. Okay, now on this side we have two negatives and when you put two negatives together it stays negative and gets even more so. So we're going to keep our numbers add them and keep the sign two negatives when you're adding them together is still negative okay that gives us negative 92 now I can divide by 4 is what's happening to my x is that it's being multiplied 
So let's undo multiplication with division. That's going to cancel. And if you work this out, it should equal negative 23. So x is equal to negative 23. Okay, now this isn't very much new information other than we're just combining like terms before we finish solving. Let's try a few more. Actually, you know what, let's stop there and do our skills check one. Before we keep going, let's just um, take a second, pause the video right here, and I want you just to look at skills check one on page 312. All right, try them on your own, and then hit play when you're ready to check them with me. All right, hopefully you've had a minute to try these. Um, the first two, one and two, are just simplifying. Just put everything together that you could. You only have B and a constant, something without a variable. So when you put them together, you should get 11B minus 3. For number two, you should have the 18R, put it together with the negative 6R and the negative 2R. So there's three things you could add together. Uh, that gives you 10R, and then that plus 9 just kind of hangs out. Nothing happens to him. Okay, number 3, you should combine the 8, I'm sorry, the 3x plus 5x and get 8x. That equals 104, and you should then divide by 8 and find that x equals 13. Number 14, you should do a little bit of combining. This one looks very similar to example 2 that we did. Um, you should get 7x plus 2 equals negative 12, and then you'd have negative, I'm sorry, 7x equals negative 14 and when you divide that by 7 you get x equals negative 2. Number 5. Um, there's really no terms to combine on either side of the equal sign so you can just go ahead and solve this. You're going to subtract 4 from both sides but be careful you're left with a negative 7x so you'll divide by a negative 7. Okay so you have a positive divided by a negative gives you a negative so that's also negative 2 and for number 6 you should have gotten um, your 2x plus your negative 5x, combine those on the same side, then you can go ahead and subtract that 8 from both sides, and then you would divide by negative 3, and you would get x equals negative 22. Okay, how'd you do on those? Hopefully you did okay. Don't forget, please check in. If there's ever a point that you're not understanding, it's your responsibility to take hold of that learning. I'll be able to assess um, from what you did yesterday on the Google form. Um, but as we keep going, just make sure you're checking in and asking questions. Um, I'm on Instagram, email, text. I'll video chat you. I've already done that a few times, so it will make it work. All right. Well, let's go back to example three. I'm going to keep going with some more here. Now, before we can combine anything, I need to recognize here that I'm going to do not only combining things, but I've got these parentheses, and I have two terms inside my parentheses and a number outside. That should automatically make you think that you need to use the distributive property. So if you see those two parentheses and something inside that's joined by an addition or subtraction, you've got to do the distributive property that 7 goes to both the x and the 3. So let's rewrite this. Now I'm going to 7x plus 7 times 3 gives me 21, plus 5x equals 69. Again, no new information, just a lot of um, combining that we haven't done in the past. Oops, I should grab this plus sign. Now I'm going to find my like terms and put them together. Uh, that gives me 12x plus 21 equals 69. And now this is something you're probably pretty familiar with, and we can um, solve for our x all by itself. We need to subtract before we can divide. So let's take that 21 away. That gives me 12x equals 48. Oh, I forgot my 1 there. Okay, now I'm still solving for x, and it's being multiplied, so I'll undo that by division. So x will equal... Oops, it's an x, equals 4. Okay, how are you feeling about these? You following my steps okay? Feel free to pause it, slow me down, back up as you need, okay? All right, we're going to keep going. If you need to watch that example again, go ahead. Here is example 4. Okay, I want you to stop and think. The part that I'm pointing to, what does that make you think automatically? If you set the distributive property, yourself a pat on the back. Sorry, I can't really throw you Trousdale cash right now, but 
Um, but good job either way. Before we combine any like terms, we are simply going to apply the distributive property. You have to do that. Write it all out. I know some of you don't want to write it out. Uh, if you don't, write out the distributive property line here. After you've multiplied through, you're going to really struggle. Even in my pre-calculus class and calculus classes and things like that, you always walk it through. And then combining like terms and dividing, some of those things you'll get to being able to do them in your head, but this part is is really just difficult. So I want you to get in the habit of writing everything out. Now, what we do need to note here is that we're not just multiplying by nine, we're gonna be multiplying by a negative nine. It owns the sign in front of it. So we get a negative nine y negative nine times four. Oh, that's a y, sorry, is negative nine. Now we do the negative nine times my four, okay? And I can get um, my negative 36 here equals two. Okay, so you have to write this step out, um, some of the other steps, if you're getting to the point where you can combine them or do them in your head, that's okay, but right now, I need you to make sure you write out the distributive property. Okay, so there's really nothing to combine in terms of y's, I only have one y, so let's go ahead and put uh, this 20 and that negative 36 together first. I'm going to get negative 9y, that gives me minus 16, is that right, minus, yeah, minus 16. Okay, now, and then it's still equal to 2. Make sure you're um, just simplifying this as we go. Clean it up a little bit. Still looking for y. Now instead of subtracting, we're going to add on both sides of my equal sign. Um, I'm getting past the point of drawing my line all the way down. If some of you still need to do that, it is not wrong by any means, okay? So add to both sides. Let's take negative 9y, set it equal to 18. Uh, still looking for y, so we're going to divide. Careful that you don't just divide by 9. You want to get rid of that negative, so let's do it all at the same time. All right, we should get y equals negative 2. Now, if you are unsure or certain at any point, you can come back, take this y, and plug it back into your original equation. Apply the um, order of operations. So we could try this. We could do 20 minus 9 times negative 2 plus 4 equals 2. If this is really what y equals, it should be a true statement. So let's see, 20 minus 9 times 2. 20, make sure you do multiplication before subtraction, order of operations. So 2 equals 2. Check, that's correct. You don't have to do that, but that's a great way if you're not sure. Okay, hang in there with me. We have seven examples. We're almost there. So this one... Um, we're back to just simplifying, okay? We're going to take a few more steps here, um, and I want you to recognize something here that we have to distribute, um, and then we'll get back to solving, okay? So what I want you to see is that we have the parentheses, and we have two terms inside the parentheses, and previously we made you think, hey, the bright lights are flashing, the alarms are going, there's this big flash in the sky that's making you alert and aware the alarm is going because you've got to use the distributive property, okay? Um but it doesn't look like that right now because there's no number right in here. No number visible, but really there's an invisible one that's always hanging out in there. You are multiplying that whole quantity right here by negative one. So really what's happening is you have 18x and you're subtracting 4x and you're also subtracting a negative nine or taking a negative 1 times that negative 9. So this part here actually has to be positive. Okay, so both, and you could write it out the way I was doing it, um, but two negatives turn into a positive. So I'm just going to write it that way. Okay, now I can go ahead and combine my like terms. I've got some x's here. One's positive, one's negative. So that gives me 14x plus 9. Okay, so again, if you see this and then you have two terms in here, whether they're being added or subtracted, make sure that you know that this negative symbol right here is distributed to both the first term and the second term. So it's the opposite of everything inside of there. This is a very common mistake, ones that I see all the way up, even through uh, the highest maths that you see, people forget to distribute that. So learn it now, get ingrained to your soul, it's going to help you for the rest of math, okay? All right. Pause it, take a breather if you need. We have example six, 
seven, last skills check, then you're done for the day. Tomorrow you can do some practice on this, okay? All right, like I promised, we are going to practice that same skill, but we're going to solve now, okay? So when I see this parentheses and I have two terms inside, the lights are flashing, you know to use the distributive property, but in this case, I am distributing a negative through there. I'm distributing a negative one if you want to multiply the whole thing by negative one. Um, so we're going to rewrite, just like I said before, instead of a positive x right here, it's the opposite, a negative of a positive x or a negative x. And instead of this positive 8, it's going to be the opposite or times a negative 1. So minus 8 equals 20. I can now combine my terms that are the same. I don't have any with an x. I just put my uh, constants together, but be so, so careful here. Look, this x isn't an x, it's a negative x. We were so careful to distribute it, don't leave it behind, okay? If you need, you can kind of put a little um, circle or a different color around the one that, even if it's by itself, you can't combine it, of course, but, okay, a positive 9 and a negative 8 gives you a positive 1 equals 20, okay? Now I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, a negative x going to equal 19 and I'm not done yet I still have this invisible little one right here um, I want to get rid of that negative sign so I'm going to divide by a negative one if you want to multiply by a negative one that'll give you the same answer doesn't matter you're just trying to get rid of that negative so we have x equaling negative 19 which that makes sense right if negative x equals 19 then an x would equal negative 19 okay all right last one Okay, first things first, you want to distribute. Hmm. And I see these parentheses. There's two terms inside. You've got to think distribution. Um, but is there something that I need to distribute? I'm really distributing a positive. There's like a positive 1. Well, if you multiply everything by a positive 1, does anything happen? No, it really stays the same. So when you see a plus sign right in front of parentheses with more than one term inside, you can just drop the parentheses. If you want to multiply the whole thing by a positive one, you go right ahead, but you will end up, what will happen is just dropping the parentheses, okay? Now, are we skipping that step? No, not really. It just stays the same, okay? Um, so we rewrote it as 5x plus 3x plus 4 equals 40, and now we can um, combine our like terms, make sure each term has its sign in front, it owns the sign in front. All right, uh, we have a line down or equal sign. Now we get 8x plus 4 equals 40. Well, let's subtract the 4 from both sides. All right, divide by 8. It's not going to come out fully evenly, that's okay. Now I'm just going to move over to this other side. I'm running out of space here. Um, so x is going to equal 4 and a half. Okay, you can write it as a decimal or as a fraction. I don't care. Either way, if you are using a fraction, make sure it's in simplest form. Okay, good job. All right, skills check two, your last one. You're on page 314. Try numbers one through four. Pause the video and check in for the answers. All right, hopefully you have these four complete and you're not just skipping ahead. Um, all right, go ahead and make sure you recognize you need to distribute first. So you need to distribute your negative two. It's not just a two, it's a negative two. So you should get seven X minus two X minus eight equals 27. Check your work, okay? So for the first one then, once you combined your like terms, you should get X to equal seven. Number two, um, again, you need to distribute a negative, but I'm going to actually show you an extra step here because I think it's going to be easy to accidentally miss this. When you distributed through, you needed to distribute, I should use another color, um, you want to distribute that negative three all the way through. So what's really happening is that you get nine minus You've got the negative 3 times 2x gives you that minus 6x, but a negative times a negative is a positive 21, okay? So go ahead and finish. Oh, that should be a 2. Um, finished combining all your like terms, and you should get x to equal negative 2. 
All right, number three, you had two sets to distribute. That was a lot. We didn't do one like that. Hopefully you tried it out. Um, she got 5x plus 5 minus 2x plus 3 equals 53. If that's not what you had, go back and check your distribution, and then you can combine your like terms. You should get x equal 15. And last but not least, uh, you had to distribute a negative. So you should have 7x minus 2 minus 4x minus 1 equals negative 2. And when you combine all those terms, you should get x to equal 1 third. Okay, how'd you do on that? Hopefully you did well. Again, reach out to me, but you are done for the day. If you have these notes, check in tomorrow to practice them. Have a great day. Miss you guys. You are doing a great job. Bye.